Whatever God's servant carries that you desire, take it now. Lord, we give you glory. Blessed be your name, Lord. Lord, send us your word again this hour. Let your word come strong in this service. Let the mystery of the prophetic mantle be revealed. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please, you may be seated. I appreciate God's servant, the resident pastor, for yet another privilege has granted me to bring God's word to us. That grace that backs him up in the previous two services shall be backing me up also in this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Living Faith Church worldwide is a place for signs and wonders. Looking at the scene out there, you say it is a home for signs and wonders. And in our prophetic team for the moment, we say, I am redeemed to operate in the supernatural. The scripture backing it up, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, he say, I and the children whom the Lord has given unto me, we are for signs and for wonders. We are for signs and for wonders. To manifest in the supernatural is to operate with the God kind of life. That means if I say I'm manifesting in the supernatural, it simply means I'm operating with the God kind of life. And everyone born of God is to operate like God. Is to function like God. He said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. That means let's make man to look like us and to function like us. Let them operate like us. We operate in the supernatural. Let man also operate in the supernatural. But we can only operate in the supernatural when we are saved. When we are born again, we are born of the spirit. According to John chapter number 3 and verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And verse 8, it said, the wind bloweth where it listed, and no one can tell where it goeth or where it's coming from. See, that is how everyone that is born of God is to operate. No man is to predict him. Why? Because he operates in the supernatural. That means for me to operate my foundation for operating in the supernatural is new birth. I must be saved. Also, if I must operate in the supernatural, it is by faith. By faith. You need faith to command the supernatural. Why everyone that operates by faith simply operate in the class of God. Mark chapter number 9, verse 23. Everyone that operates by faith is simply operating in the class of God. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe... All things are possible to him that believes. All things. Your believing brings you to operating in the class of God. Because all things are possible with God. Mark chapter 10 and verse 27. All things possible to the one that believes. And Jesus looking. Upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Bringing Mark chapter 9 verse 23 together with this, you can see that everyone that operates by faith operates like God. Everyone that operates by faith 
He operates like God. And God operates in the supernatural. So if you're a man of faith, you also operate in the supernatural. Quickly, let's look at vital keys to unlocking the supernatural. Vital keys. We have seen different keys, but in this service, we shall be looking at the mystery of the prophetic mantle, which is one of the keys. Another key to operate in the supernatural is the key of the prophetic mantle. The key of the prophetic mantle. Understand that the prophetic mantle or the mantle from a prophet is one of the instruments for operating in the supernatural. And we saw that clearly in 2 Kings chapter number 2 from verse 12 to verse 15. Elisha, Elijah, Elijah took the mantle of Elijah and he operated like Elijah. Theologians told us that he did two times the things that Elijah did. Why? Because he coveted for double portion of the anointing and he got it. So via the prophetic mantle, we command the supernatural. Jordan was before him. And he went there and did exactly what his master did. Before they crossed over to the other side, Elijah smoothed the water with his mantle and it parted. When Elijah was taken away, Elisha returned back to the same Jordan, stroke it and it parted again. That means the prophetic mantle is an instrument to command the supernatural. A prophetic mantle is any clothing materials such as handkerchiefs and aprons taken from God's apostle or prophet. Any prophet, any apostle, any material Taken from them becomes a mantle. Any material that touches the body of any prophet or apostle, it becomes a prophetic mantle. But we must understand that we must believe in the material in our hands. That means we must believe that that material in our hands came out of a prophet. It came out of an apostle. We must believe in it. Understand this. Elisha believed in what was in his hand. He believed in it. If he never believed in it, he could have never engaged it. But the proof that he believed in that material that was in his hand was the application of it. He applied it as a proof of his belief. So it is any clothing material. It can be handkerchief. It can be his shirt. It can be anything as long as it's a clothing material that comes out of a prophet or an apostle. There was a time a pastor told me that this tie I'm putting on is a mantle. And I said, why, sir? He said, because it was given to me by God's servant, the apostle over this commission. He said, back in the days when they go for meeting, God's servant gives them something. At times, it is just a tie. He gives it to them. Them at the state level or the provincial level at that time, each time they go, he must leave them with something. And they value it. They count on it. They believe in it. I had God's servant, the first vice president, Bishop David Abioye. He said he was invited. Okay, God's servant was invited. That is Bishop Oyedepo was the one that was invited to minister somewhere in Ghana. But based on his tight schedule, he could not make it. And he sent him to go and represent him. 
He said when he got there, he was ministering. And after his ministration, the people said they want to see the demonstration of God's power. And they presented before him a blind man. According to him, he said, his liver failed. According to him, he said his liver failed. And he quickly remembered there was something in his inner pocket, which is a prophetic mantle. And he said to himself, oh God of Bishop Yedeko, show yourself now. I am here to represent him, so back him up. And he said he now turned. His mind was still shaking, but he just left with the mantle and touched the eyes of the blind man. And he said immediately he touched him, he turned immediately and moved because fear was still there. And the next thing he had was shouts. They were shouting, what happened? The eyes were open. The blind man began to see. His, his liver failed, but he put his faith in the mantle. And it answered for him. It in the mantle is the anointing of the prophet. In the mantle is the anointing of the prophet. His anointing is always in his clothing. I had another story by God's servant, Bishop Oyedeko. He said, a time came he was coming into the service wearing his native, his Baba Rigaden. And as he was coming into the service, there was a man sitting close to his entrance where he was going to pass through. And this man was afflicted for years. He said he passed the man and the man touched the cloth he was wearing in faith. He touched in faith and went and he, he didn't even know why he said number one, the virtue is not mine. So I am not Jesus to know that virtue left me. He didn't even know that anything happened. But by the time he got up there, when time was called for testimony, the man came forth. The affliction was terminated instantly. Why? He touched the clothing material of a prophet. So put your faith in line this morning. Put your faith in line this morning. But what is in the mantle? What is in the mantle? The overflowing anointing upon a prophet. The overflowing anointing of a prophet is in the mantle. Please understand this. Every cloth worn by a prophet, there is anointing in it. There is anointing in it because the overflowing anointing is being deposited in that material. The anointing flowing through him is being deposited there. A time came, Bishop Thomas Aremu said, then it was in Kenaland then, and he just finished ministering. He was privileged to minister from the altar. He just finished ministering from the altar. As he came down from the altar, the service was over. He was going back. A woman was pursuing him behind. He never wanted to talk to the woman because he knew that the anointing was so heavy on him. But the woman refused to let go. She was pursuing him. I must talk to you. My child is dying. I must talk to you. And he could not turn to talk to the woman. The only thing he did was to put his hand in his pocket, remove the handkerchief that was with him, and he dropped it. He said, woman, pick it. And he left he said, and I turned back to look at the woman as she was picking it. She picked it, she fell. She go again, she picked, she fell. She went again, she picked, she refused to give up until she took it. And she went. She placed it on the child and the dead child, or the about to die child, jacked back to life. The overflowing anointing. Please don't despise any prophet. Don't despise any apostle. They carry excess anointing. I heard somebody told me that in Goshen, immediately the service is shut down. You can't see Bishop Abioye. 
He said, no. You, that you can't see him. Why? Because you can't confront him. The anointing can knock you down. Apart from the pastors walking directly with him. So, according to him, he told me, he said, he relaxed for about 30 minutes to one hour before anybody can come in. The anointing flowing. The overflowing anointing. And where did they get it from? They got it from our father in the faith. Bishop David Oyedepo. That is where the thing is flowing down. How do I know? Psalms chapter number 133 verse 1 to 3. Psalms chapter 133. Why is he working for them? He said, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Next verse. He said, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that runs down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirt of his garment. That means as the anointing is flowing from the top, it goes round. It goes down. Please, it is the value attached to those people that command the flow of it. According to God's servant, he said, it is your sense of value that determines the flow of virtue. Your sense of value. It is your value. Why? Because Every pastor in this commission is a son of the prophet. And in every son of the prophet, there is a deposit of their prophet's anointing. In every son of the prophet, there is a deposit of the anointing of the prophet. God's servant in our midst, a resident pastor, there is a deposit of the prophet's anointing in him as a son of the prophet. It is your regard for him that commands the anointing to flow to you. Why? He is God's servant representative here. When you want to see Bishop Oyedeko in our midst, he is the one representing him here. So whatever is flowing from the top is flowing down. I discovered something that many members don't understand. They don't understand spiritual principle. Some members will even come to you and tell you, I need the account number of Papa. The question is, have you asked for the account number of his son on grand? Representing him on grand. Sir, it is not how far you look. It is how you can see well. Some may be looking up there. Thank God for the anointing. But appreciate the anointing that is before you first. I strongly believe that that same grace in his servant flows among the pastors. Regard the anointing in them. Regard it. It will answer for you. I say it will answer for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shared a testimony sometime and I told him, I said, it can't affect you because you're a giver. No, it can't. Why? Because he appreciates the anointing. And in terms of trouble or in terms of challenges, the anointing should speak. Please understand this. One of the ways to trigger the anointing is by appreciating the anointing. You may be asking, what does it mean? By appreciating the anointing. Appreciate the anointing over that life. It speaks. It shall speak for you in the name of Jesus. Remember, priesthood in the Old Testament represents the apostolic and prophetic ministry of the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul said the life, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. He said, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So, the prophet in the Old Testament 
they represented today apostles. They represented today prophets. Quickly, how to assess transference of unction from the prophetic mantle? How do I assess it? How do I assess this anointing? How can it be transferred to me? How can I partake of this anointing? Number one, receive the person and the ministry of the prophet. Receive. How do I receive? By believing. I receive by believing. So I must believe in that person. I must believe that the anointing of God is upon him. So I receive him by believing. Receive the person and the ministry of the prophet. Look at how Jesus said it. In John chapter 1 and verse 12. He said from as many as have received him. Received here talks about belief in him. That's what it means. But as many that have received him. To them gave he power. So for as many that have received the prophet. The anointing of the prophet is also flow to them. When you receive him. His unction flows to you. You become a partaker of it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. It says, He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Next verse. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the prophet reward. It's simple. You receive the prophet, you partake of his anointing. When you receive the prophet, you partake of his anointing. Number two, after receiving him, after you believe his anointing, what do you do? Crave for what he or she carries. Crave for the anointing. Pant for it. Be hungry for it. Be thirsty for it. Isaiah. Chapter 55. Verse 1. Isaiah 55. 1. Ho! Everyone that tested. Come ye to the waters. And he that had no money. Come ye. Buy and eat. Yea, come. Buy ye milk. Buy ye wine and milk without money. And without price. What is he talking about? He's talking about. Be panting for the anointing that they carry. Be thirsty for it. Be hungry for it. Crave for it. We saw. In 2 Kings chapter number 2 and verse 9. How Elisha craved for the anointing upon Elijah. And it came to pass when they went over. That Elijah said unto Elisha. Ask what I shall do for thee. Before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said. I pray thee. Let a double portion of thy spirit. Be upon me. Craving. But we saw from verse 1 how he craved for it to this level. I had God's servant said, a time came, he went for Kenneth Hagin's meeting. Where he was sitting up the gallery, he was craving for that same spirit upon Hagin. And he said, Lord, let what makes Hagin, Hagin comes upon me. And he said, instantly, he saw the face of Kenneth Hagin transform into a face of a baby. And something hit him. And he had a voice. He said, son, the button has been passed to you. He was craving for it. And it came to him. You must crave for it to get it. What must I do? 
for this unction to be transferred to me. Engage a soul tie with your prophet. Whosoever you have chosen to be your prophet, engage in a soul tie. Just like when a woman and a man is in a relationship and the man will beat her and kick her and push her away, she will cry and go. Tomorrow she returns. They say, what happened? They say, it's a soul tie. I can't leave him. My soul is tied to him. I can't leave him. If you understand how it is in a relationship, that is how it should be also between you and your prophet. He can look at your face and say, you are useless. Say, yes, sir. You are a stupid boy. Yes, sir. I'm following you. That is a soul tie. You must have a soul tie with him. If it must flow. We saw in 2 Kings, which is our case study, chapter 2, verse 4, verse 6, and verse 8. Elisha, I'm going to the next place. Just wait for me here. Say no. As the Lord live it, as thy soul live it, I'm going with you. There was a soul tie. He refused to give up until he got it. You will get us in the service in the mighty name of Jesus. Number next. Engage in a sonship tie with your prophet. Be a son. Behave as a son. Just like you can't let go of your biological father, don't let go of them. Hold on to the prophet. Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse 22. Number next, stay connected both with your spirit and with your soul for continuous flow. That means your spirit must be connected to his spirit. Your soul must be connected to his soul. It is that connectivity that guarantees the continuous flow. I have seen many people, they say, ah, this man is my father. And they have been enjoying his grace. And the time came, they believe they have arrived. So they walk away and the anointing also dried up. It is your connectivity that keeps the anointing flowing ever. You must remain connected to enjoy the flow. If you run away, you lose it. So stay connected. I was watching one of the programs organized by Dynamics, and Papa was there. To show you how connected he has been with Papa. The moment Papa picked the veil of oil to anoint him, he was flat on the floor. The anointing hit him. But there are many here that the anointing is not touching them. The soul time, the sonship time. You can see it. The oil has not even touched him. He was on the floor with his wife. They were sobbing. It was so strong. That is connection. And that is why the same growth in the, uh, grace in this commission is speaking there. We can also see the one of salvation ministry. Same grace. Why? Because they are connected. I had a BMA said, when the church was not growing, we stopped praying for our church. We started praying for living faith church. That is connectivity. Soul is connected. Spirit is connected. And he said, before we knew it, as Living Faith Church was growing, we began to grow. A wise man. The one that is connected. Please don't be here. Don't be in here and you are not partaking of the grace. Crave for it. I see it working for you in the mighty name of Jesus. As we round up this service, It is important to know what is unique about Living Faith Church worldwide. Very important for us to know what is unique. Number one, God 
has set an apostle over this commission whose anointing is being replicated in the lives of many members today. The apostle is God's servant, Bishop David Oyedipo, and the same anointing at work in him is flowing in the lives of many members. As many that are connected, the anointing is flowing to them. Same grace. That is why a member will tell you, I can never fail. Because this commission cannot fail. Get this clear. When you are connected, you will talk like your father. That means, when he says, I can't fail, you too should say, I can't fail. When he said, I can never be poor, you too should be able to say, I can never be poor. If he says, I can never be sick, you should be able to say so. Because the anointing over him is upon you. First Samuel chapter number 10 and verse 10. The anointing came upon Saul and he became king. This commission is one of the cities of refuge in these last days. Where God delivers, preserves, and restores. The anointing over this commission preserves. We had a testimony in the covenant hour prayer. The man said, I came to Living Faith Church and the doors opened up. I began to prosper and I now went back to where I was before. And within a year, everything dried up. And I remember, when I went to this place, things worked for me. He said, I better go back. And he came back. Everything turned around again. He now said, this time around, I know that this is my place. This is my city of refuge. Please, if you have been blessed here, remain here to continue to be blessed. So in this commission, there is preservation. There is deliverance. And there is restoration. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. God's presence in this commission has continued to make the difference in the lives of individual members and the church as a family. Why is Living Faith Church growing the anointing over this commission? Why are the members experiencing exploits the anointing over this commission. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The anointing is mighty. Finally, this commission is ordained by God to wipe away the tears from off all faces. Remember the vision? God's servant said, I saw people beaten, battered, condemned. There was no hope for them. And God said to him, Son, from the beginning, it was not so. I am sending you now to go and rescue them. With the word of faith, go and rescue them. And from that day, souls have been rescued. Tears have been wiped away from the faces of men. Via the prophetic mantle in this service, your own tears shall be wiped away in the name of Jesus. Every issue of concern in your life shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. But understand, you can never partake of it. Until you are a member of the body of Christ. Before you become a member of winner's family, you must first become a member of the body of Christ. That is what qualifies you to become a member of this family. Please, wherever you are, all eyes closed, all heads bowed to the glory of Jesus. You know you are not yet a member of the body of Christ. That means you are not born again. That means you are not yet saved. You have not received Jesus as your Lord. This is the right time. If the prophetic mantle must speak for you, you must be saved. That is the foundation. 
Because Jesus is the anointed one. It is the anointing of Jesus that flows to his servant. And it is the anointing of Jesus through his servant that flows through us. It is Jesus' anointing. So you must identify with Jesus first. Wherever you are, all eyes closed. Please, you want to identify with Jesus, place your right hand on your chest. Let your right hand be on your chest this moment. If you have done that, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your death on the cross for me. I believe that you died for me. I believe that God the Father raised you up from the dead for my justification. I confess you this hour as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I'm born again. I am a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed.